having looked into basics of uh, polymers, now let us look into some of the specific uses of polymer in construction. Some of course, you have looked in the last time in the last lecture. This lecture will look into concrete repair and protection, paints and coatings used in construction, adhesives, sealants, uses of elastomers in construction. Then we will look into composites and lastly the waterproofing materials. So, we will look into materials not really the techniques, but mostly the polymeric materials those goes into this sort of processes. But remember that we actually stopped when we were talking of polymer concrete composite, we stopped with only one polymer concrete. There are two other types of polymer concrete composites and I would like to first go into them and then go into the repair process. Now, one of the most important repair, important type of repair material that goes into concrete uh, construction is polymer concrete polymer concrete composites, we call it you know one of the variety is polymer cement concrete PCC. So, you can see that what we see is PCC polymer cement concrete, this is also called polymer modified concrete. Now, unlike last class, last class at the end we talked about polymer concrete where the hydraulic cement binder is completely replaced by a monomer resin and hardener system which together with the aggregates forms a polymer concrete like epoxy concrete ok, epoxy concrete. Now, polymer modified concrete does not remove the hydraulic cement binder completely. So, therefore, cement and water both are there and at the same time you add a polymeric material which modifies or you say that is why you call it either polymer modified concrete or you call it polymer cement concrete PCC that is why the name PCC. So, hydraulic cement binder with water can be replaced partly. So, we are replacing it partly by polymers to form polymer modified mortar or concrete mostly used for repair purposes. The example is latex modified concrete. We have mentioned earlier about latex and this is latex modified concrete you know the rubber we talked about rubber the rubber latex is earlier in the last class. So, this is latex modified concrete is one of those polymer modified concrete. There are varieties of them some of them we will discuss when we talk about repair. This concrete is also stronger and it can be made into a very highly flowable micro concrete and pos, uh, can be used in repair work where you know concrete cannot flow um, this, this concrete can be used for highly flow flowable micro concrete for repair purpose. So, its processing is similar to that of ordinary concrete that means say you have cement water system and this modify polymer you know the modify the latex system mix them together in the same manner as you mix the ordinary concrete and uh, uh, that gives you polymer cement concrete polymer cement concrete. So, that is another variety uh, which is used right. The other type of polymer concrete composite is called polymer impregnated concrete this is uh, not really uh, we are not making concrete really with the polymer, but once we have made the concrete then we impregnate the polymer. So, this is PIC polymer impregnated concrete. Now, hydraulic cement binder concrete is impregnated with low viscosity monomer. So, you make a good concrete in the beginning and then you impregnate it with a low viscosity monomer that will polymerize inside the concrete inside the concrete pores to form polymer impregnated concrete. So, hydraulic cement binder concrete is impregnated with low viscosity monomer that is polymerized to form polymer impregnated concrete. Now, this concrete surface becomes basic idea is that you see you cannot impregnate it to very deep within the section, but you can penetrate up to certain depth with from outside surface. So, the surface becomes impervious stronger durable and high abrasion resistance. This has been very successfully used in bridge deck wearing coats you see what happens is bridge deck you know they have a wearing coat because actual structural member 
the deck member, the structure reinforced concrete or pre-stressed concrete member, you protect it with a wearing coat. Now this coat with time tends to give away because of the traffic, abrasion. So it gives away and then what you do? You got to replace it. Now replacing is very difficult, you cannot remove it and then put it back. So what do you do? You relay over the old one, another layer and if you go on doing that, actually dead weight of the wearing coat onto the structure, onto the deck becomes very, very large. So time comes when actually it is no longer viable to put that. But supposing I put now a material, put the wearing coat all right and impregnate it with polymeric material, polymer impregnated, you know make it polymer impregnated concrete, the, the abrasion resistance being very high, it life cycle is much higher. This has been used successfully over bridge deck. The actual technical process of impregnating in precast members could be evacuate them, put it in a vacuum cham chamber, evacuate them, then expose them to the monomer which then impregnates into the concrete pores together with of course the catalyst and other things through which it will get polymerized. So you can polymerize chemically by adding uh, some sort of hardener or catalyst or whatever it is the agent or else you can polymerize it through heat or radiation or similar sort of thing in case of precast elements. But then precast elements polymer impregnation is not you know it is it's, this is possible but what about cast in situ? As I said bridge wiring coat you can just flood it, the ponding can be done. It can be ponded with the monomer and then it is covered up because otherwise it will evaporate. Might use a little bit of infrared heating, heating by heating pads or may be allowed to chemically polymerize within the pores. The polymer loading in such cases is not very high, but anyway it gives you good abrasion resistance and uh, life of the wearing coat increases in such situations. So polymer impregnation can be used in similar sort of situations, uh, not under pressure but just like just you know just load it, do ponding and things like that. Now such concrete is uh, such concrete has, has got much higher strength than ordinary concrete. You can have a very high, you know, strength improvement ratio can be very high, two, three times easily compared to the parent concrete. If you impregnate it with polymer, the strength would increase two, th twice, thrice because now the pores are blocked. So the crack cannot propagate. Durability improves because the pores are not there, they are again blocked, etc. So, lot of properties improvement, abrasion resistance improvement takes place and this can, this has been used successfully. So this is another kind of polymer concrete composite, uh, three types we discussed, one is polymer concrete, other is polymer modified concrete and the last one is polymer impregnated concrete. So this continued from the last class. Now let us look at now the concrete repair and use of polymeric material in concrete repair. We are not going to look at the repair system as such, but we are trying to see the application of polymers in concrete repair. Now let us schematically look at the repair process. You see if I look schematically to the repair process, uh, if I look schematically to the repair process, right, uh, look schematically to the repair process, it would be something like this. It will look something like this, concrete repair process if I look at, it will be something like this. Uh, You see, first of all, to do any repair, to do any repair, I must first find out what is the cause of the damages, then accordingly provide a solution. That is the idea, right? Repair essentially means, essentially means finding cause of the uh, damages and then finding a solution. Anyway, that is separate, but uh, uh, that is that is look at the repairs because we are looking and trying to look at the materials used in repair process. So we reconstruct the structure, repair means we reconstruct the part of the structure and all the functions that it was supposed to do that is that should be restored. Now there are four types of processes involved, the bonding process, the injection process, surface repair process and application of coating. So surface repair, injection, bonding. So main processes involved are this and then repair materials we use would go into the, with those processes, right. Now bonding means what? Well it will give us, restore the mechanical functioning. That means if there was a strength loss or something, 
there is a crack or something. So, it does the bonding between the uh, two portion which has got cracked and the load transfer from one side of the crack to the other side of the crack should be possible. So, mechanical uh, load transfer or for example, if there is a delamination between the reinforcement and the concrete. So, when you do this bonding job, uh, you know concrete uh, the reinforcement will get again bonded with the concrete and it can carry the load. So, here the mechanical functions are important right. Then you have got uh, injection grouting sometimes through injection grouting you um, injection you can improve the concrete itself. You improve the concrete itself by injection by some inject you know some element injecting certain things. So, you see, see that what are the materials that goes in. Then surface repairs are mainly required for mainly required for uh, durability point of view and then of course, from the point of view of aesthetics as well. So, in such situations the sometime sometime mechanical performances are also important, but most often it is the protection against leaching against corrosion and such things. So, surface repairs go into this mainly and then sometime aesthetic also as you can see from here. So, the surface repairs purpose is aesthetic protection as well as sometime mechanical both injection and bonding goes to mechanical performance, but injection can also go into protection also because you inject material to block the pores from outside. So, injection is different than the impregnation because impregnation could be without any pressure application. Injection is surely through pressure application. Then application of coating or paint mainly for protection purposes and for aesthetic purposes. So, these are the processes involved in repair processes and then material corresponding to this we will try to see some of them right. So, that is what we will try to see what are the materials uh, corresponding to this uh, processes each of these processes we will look into materials corresponding to this process. So, let us see what are the classes of repair product according to this uh, repair processes that we mentioned. If you look at the material first without looking at the processes then there are of course, products based on hydraulic bind binders and we are not going to look into them because this we have seen earlier cementitious material there are very or they can be special discussion on repair materials. We are not looking into repair materials just how we are rather looking into polymeric materials that go into repairs. So, therefore, this will not look much, but we will look into hydraulic binder with additives again there can be two types other than polymeric the polymeric type. So, we will look into we will concentrate ourselves into the second one that is polymeric system. And you remember we mentioned about polymer modified uh, cement concrete system, cement mortar system right and that is what it is. So, product products based on hydraulic binder with the additive that is our polymeric additive and latex modified concrete for example, polyvinyl acetate, uh, styrene butadiene rubber, polyacrylic and similar polyvinyl acetate PVA sort of polyacrylic styrene butadiene rubber SBR systems these are the ones which are the examples of latex modified system. Because you know latexes are nothing they are basically fine powders that is what we said sometime earlier that ultra fine uh, material actually here they are powders not emulsions uh, dried emul from the emulsion. So, ultra fine powders very fine powders which when you add to the cement system they actually form intermediate bonds between the cement. Uh, system particle themselves cementitious particle themselves and they strengthen the whole system. Of course, details of this mechanism we are not going to look into at the moment. So, there are usually the latexes rubber latexes goes in polymer modified concrete and styrene butadiene rubber SBR system as it is called it is very commonly used for uh, repair works. Then polyacrylic and polyvinyl acetate also are used quite often. Now, this could be mono component in that case it is pre mixed system that means, the manufacturer normally would give you a he, it, it would be mixed from the factory itself. So, it is a pre mixed system or you can have bi component that means, you mixed in situ together with the cementitious system and together with cement aggregate filler etcetera etcetera and get that repair product. So, this is one class of repair product that is product based on modified hydraulic binder right that is polymer modified. Uh, concrete system. Then the most commonly used are the product based on synthetic resi resin system. So, let us see some of them synthetic resin system product based on synthetic binders most common one is the epoxy resins. Epoxy resin is, uh, is a bi component reacting 
material reacting in ambient temperature. I can just give you a common day to day examples which you many of us would have used every day at our uh, you know residences or uh, house or home, araldite it is nothing but epoxy system. So, you have got one glue component and a hardener component. Now, varieties of epoxy systems are there which are used in construction. So, they too have it is a bicomponent system reacting in ambient temperature. You mix them up together and they actually uh, react uh, you know in the ambient temperature. Chemically they are polyethers formed by reaction between poly epoxy base and a hardener which are polyamines. So, you have a glue and hardener system as I meant or it is called base and uh, hardeners right. This is the hardeners are usually polyamines. So, poly epoxy comprising of active hydrogen this polyamines comprising of active hydrogen atom. Okay, details of the chemistry is again we will not look into, but just as an sort of uh, information base. The product after polymerization is highly cross linked structure and this reaction is exothermic. So, since it is highly cross linked uh, thermosets right, it has got a very high mechanical properties, very high strength, very high strength chemical resistances, very high mechanical properties, chemical resistance, strong bonding to usual material. So, therefore, it can act as a, act as a, act as a very good adhesive as well. So, it, it has got very strong bonding to ordinary material let us say uh, stones or sand. So, aggregates. So, therefore, it can form good concrete, very good strong concrete and it has got very high chemical resistance. So, good dimensional stability shrinkage characteristics are good dimensional stability means shrinkage characteristics or swelling characteristics. So, this is good actually not, not very large and therefore, this is used in concrete repair uh, extensively, very used in concrete repair extensively. But then this is relatively costly material therefore, their use is uh, you know economic consideration has to be given whenever they you are using such material as epoxy uh, resin based materials. Other than this are polyurethanes, uh, they are can be used for structural and non structural repairs and polyurethanes can form paint coating etcetera. Okay. The other products product wise classification we are trying to look at. So, what are the kind of products? We said that the polymer modified uh, cement binder system is one of the product, then directly uh, resin binder system like epoxy resins. Then we have uh, polyurethanes they are used in different types of uh, works paints, coating and repair non structural repairs. Then you have surface repair products they are mainly against crazing. Now, what is crazing? Crazing is fine cracks which we have mentioned in case of concrete fine cracks formed due to maybe due to shrinkage or due to effect of fire etcetera and there you might use uh, uh, you know uh, polymer modified system, they are used polymer made modified system. Then bug holes which are left by the water at the shuttering at the surface in the concrete you will find bug holes which are nothing but the water that was sticking to the mold right. So, they once you open the mold this water would have evaporated leaving those void space right normally uh, rounded shape void spaces you would see they are called bug holes and you want to repair them polymer modified system would be a good material. Spalling of concrete same case you can use polymer modified system. So, well you want to bond structural bonding of reinforcement metals and composites you know epoxy resin formulations are very commonly used. So, bonding many a times epoxy resin formulations are used right all right. Let us see what are the products from usage point of view. Injection grouting, now this is used where you want to improve actually the soundness of the concrete system itself. For example, a porous concrete it is not very sound, it is not very sound you know its strength could be low, durability itself would be low. So, depending upon the situation not that everywhere you will use, but you can use injection grouting. So, what you do at closely spaced spaces you actually make nozzles and through nozzle under high pressure inject slurries or grouts. Now, these grouts could be of the two kind that is cement grout type. Now, we are not discussing again cement grout perhaps we might have discussed earlier, but not now ultra fine cement grout, but epoxy resins are also used for injection grouting. So, this is one of the use where polymeric materials are used. Then anchoring again epoxies are used, anchoring means for example, you want to possibly uh, anchor 
let us say you want to put a steel bar inside concrete. Now what will you do? You want to anchor it inside concrete. Already, already the concrete is already made. It is not in the fresh concrete. It is already made, hardened concrete. So what you do? You drill a hole into the concrete. You drill a hole into the concrete and then you can bond it with epoxy. I think I must have mentioned this earlier somewhere. So you can bond it with epoxy. So here also again epoxy resins are used. Then unsaturated polyesters are used for such anchoring purposes. Then damp proofing products which we will discuss at length sometime later on waterproofing or damp proofing products. They are siliconized. So we will talk about the siliconized silicones, silicones as they are or fluorinated derivatives. You know this could be this could be what are called pore lining treatment. We will discuss this sometime later on in this lecture itself and then uh, there could be pore, pore blocking treatment. So these products go there. Then mineralizers, silicates associated with organic molecules, these are the ones which go into damp proofing you know, product, they go into damp proofing product. So in concrete repair, then we see uh, um, uh, the, the types of materials which go into concrete repair, the epoxies, the polyurethanes, then we have seen uh, uh, product wise uh, anchoring, we have uh, um, epoxy polyesters unsaturated you know or polyesters then we have seen that uh, uh, in case of uh, bonding again epoxies so epoxy is very commonly used and then in case of some other repairs like bug hole repair some sort of uh, 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 um, you know re repairing part of the concrete is to polymer modified systems and then waterproofing etc we have seen this ones are siliconized ones are used let's see what are paints and coating uh, what are the polymers we used in paints and coatings? Now, what is a paint? Paint is a film forming product, it is a film, it is a film forming product in liquid or powder form. Now, if it is powder form, then you have to dissolve it in a kind of solvent. If it is liquid form, then it is straight away available, made up and definitely made up of opaque mixture, opaque mixture of pigments, fillers, binders, additives. And the solvent is called vehicle, the solvent in it will be there. So, if it is liquid, the solvent will already be there. If it is a powder, obviously, you will have to dissolve it in solvent, which is mostly would be water. So, this is this is this is what the paints are. Now, you see the paints are used over steel structure very often to protect it against corrosion, right. So, polymeric paints are also used for that purposes, along with uh, of course the other other inorganic paints, but polymeric paints are used. Uh, in this one. So, at the moment we are looking at the materials used in polymeric paints. Now, therefore, the paints can be it could be something like this liquid paint you apply it and then what you get it becomes dry and you have dry paint onto the substrate which could be concrete or steel or whatever, whatever you are using in the construction. So, this is what the paints are. Now, as I said it has got different, it has got different um, powders, you know, powder is made of different components. First one is a pigment. Now, pigment, first one is a pigment. You see, the pigment is here. Now, pigment gives what? It gives us color function. P pigment gives us color function. Pigment gives us color function. It gives us color function, right? Pigments gives us color function. Then you will have fillers, and let us see what does filler do. Let us see what does filler do. Filler gives us filling effect, reduces the use of the primary material, making it, it economical, but it gives us rheological characteristics. So, in EPA paints, you use powders which contains pigments, fillers, then binder, binders, and various kind of additives. So, let us see what those binders are. Supposing I do not have any powder into the paint then that is called varnish. So, in varnish you do not have powder right, it is just the liquid which you apply and that is varnish right. So, in, in paints of course, you have resins which are the binders which goes in as binders and they ensure essentially they ensure the coating of the ensures coating of the powdery material, coating of the powdery material you know they ensure coating of the powdery material. Um, 
they ensure coating of the powdery material. They ensure coating of the powdery material and it is most you know this, this is most important part because this will ensure that it is bound it is by you know it's, the binding is proper of the powdery material with the substrate it will remain in contact you know it will be binded. So, so, so the binders ensures the binding of the powdery material with the substrate and uh, this is most important. So, the epoxies, vinyls and silicones are the ones which are used for such binders. Additives could be wetting agent, fungicides etcetera because it should not be attacked by fungus. So, therefore, fungicides or plasticizing agent, flowability etcetera. Solvent which is also called vehicle makes application possible because if it is not in liquid form powders you cannot apply. So, this makes the application possible and it can act in more than one manner. For example, it may evaporate or it may help the reaction right and if, if it evaporates leaving the solid there this is one mechanism otherwise it can help the reaction. So, that it polymerizes there and remains you know and solidifies the whole thing solidifies, solidifies maybe by partial evaporation and partial reaction it remains partially by polymerization. So, it remains on the surface. So, oils, acrylic resins, chlorinated rubber, epoxies and polyurethanes etcetera they form the solvents right they form the solvents all right they form the solvents. Right. Now, usually you will have you can have three coatings, you can have three coatings for example, primer. Now, a primer ensures adhesion to the substrate that means, it is a bonding you know the bonding has to be proper, it ensures proper adhesion to the substrate. Then there is intermediate coat which is in between the primer coat and the final top coat. Now, this is essentially meant to have compatibility between these two. So, you have the primer coat which will ensure there is a bonding with the substrate. Then intermediate coat ensures that there is a bonding between primer and the top coat. It only helps you know it makes it compatible the bond is therefore, you know it is uh, rather uh, the, it is compatible between these two coats the primer and the top coat. Intermediate coat is therefore, compatible with other coats and top coat essentially is meant for resisting the condition resisting the environmental condition that is any aggressive chemical coming in it should provide the durability and also from the aesthetic point of view. So, coating is essentially meant for top coat is essentially meant for aesthetic and also from durability point of view it will protect the rest of it and uh, this intermediate coat actually bonds this top coat with the primer coat and primer coats bond the whole system with the substrate. So, that is how it is right. Now, if I have large quantity of powder, the, if the powder is con concentration is high, then it is flat paint, you know, lot of powder as you can see here, lot of powder. Satin finish paint, the powder is relatively less and glossy finished powder will be less. So, this might have a little bit of rough surfaces, where this will have very plain surfaces and in varnish you do not have any paint. Varnish you do not have any powder, varnish you do not have any powder. In glossy paint you have very little powder, in satin finish you have powder, so undulation is relatively uh, more than this, but in this one you have a flat paint, so you have a relatively rough kind of surface and the particle sets right on to top of it. Here is the liquid which you have put in and there is a coat of the liquid which solidifies and remains there, there is no powdery material and that is what is varnish. So, this is what paints and coatings used as you know for steel structures, steel structure is very common to use them over steel structural elements to uh, protect them against corrosion, environmental corrosion. Then the uh, even it is used in concrete surfaces, but in exceptional cases where for protection purposes. Well, where it is aesthetic is needed, then of course, it is very much used you know in buildings very much it is in use for aesthetic point of view, uh, so that uh, you get a good view and uh, you know good good uh, view it gives and also provides protection. In fact, if painted RCC structure supposing RCC structure it is painted it will provide sufficient protection against moisture ingress also it will give some protection against moisture ingress and durability problem as well. So, that is what is paints. Now, another class of materials which is used in construction and you have lot of polymeric materials in use are nothing but adhesives polymeric materials are used in adhesives. Let us see what are adhesives. Adhesives are compounds capable of 
sticking two or more component to form a new entity. Adhesives are compounds which are capable of sticking two components, two material, two components, two elements let us say and then it will give you a new entity. <coughs> Adhesive bonds are developed by adhesion and cohesion, we will define each of them adhesion and cohesion just now. It is usually applied in liquid states, liquid states and liquid form and it sticks to different substances by adhesion differing in nature of the, their chemical bond. So, what is adhesion? Adhesion is the bond between the substrate, between the substrate and the adhesive. There are two different material, right. So, adhesive adhesion is the force of attraction or the bond between the substrate and the adhesive itself. Now, two different material which have got two different bonds for example, in a metal and some other inorganic material which, which is not non-metal. The adhesive can bond these two material together. It will have adhesion with the metal as well as adhesion with the non-metal which you are bonding. So, adhesion is the force which defines the bond between the which, de, which is a, which is a, you know which is a bond between the substrate that is the material the component that you are bond ad, ad, bonding and the adhesive itself. Whereas, cohesion is the force between the you know it is it is the strength of the adhesive itself because on application this is applied in liquid form between two different substances and this substrates which are there they can have different chemical bonds. So, you apply them it will stick them it will stick them and it is in the initially in the liquid form and then after some time it will become solid and should have a high cohesion that means within itself it must be sufficiently strong otherwise it itself will fail. So, it should not fail therefore, it should have sufficient strong after solidification sufficiently strong. So, it should form good bond with the substrate and itself should be strong enough that is cohesion to carry the load and it should be durable. So, adhesives are basically this kind of material. Well, the adhesion between the adherents can be due to bonding that means, the adhesive and the substrates the bond between them can be due to chemical bonding techiness sometimes it is called I mean it is a kind of bonding basically or by mechanical interlocking penetrating in the pores. For example, if your substrate is porous something like concrete and you put the adhesive over it the adhesive will penetrate into the pores of it and there will be a kind of mechanical interlocking because the surface is rough or porous whereas, other kind could be there can be bonding. So, that is called techiness bonding right and in all cases adhesive should be of low viscosity because you want to apply it easily. So, it should be of low viscosity. Cohesion forces developed through the curing process because the adhesive itself will get cured it was in liquid state it will become solid. So, the cohesive forces de developed through this curing forces and you know through the curing process and the solvent if there is any would evaporate and there could be formation of regions of crystallinity or there could be cross linking because of the polymerization of the adhesive itself to provide cohesion it might get polymerized with cross linked you know cross linked structure or there could be crystallization or the fourth kind of process is by exclusion of oxygen from the surface which is not suitable against tensile forces. So, the mechanism of cohesion is either because the solvent to evaporate leaving the solid which is bonded together or because, uh, because there is polymerization and cross linking of the product of the cross linking of the material or because of crystallization or because of oxygen free you know making oxygen exclusion of oxygen from the surfaces. So, this is how the cohesion is achieved quite often it is actually polymerization of the material which ensures large scales cross linking and adhesive does not fail itself. So, it can carry the load 
because it is between it is between the substrate you know it is between the it is between the substrate since it is between the substrate um, it is since it is between the substrate therefore uh, it 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 can uh, you know it can since it is between the substrate it can bond the it can bond okay we will we'll see that it can since it is between the substrate it can actually uh, should have sufficient strength. So, it should be able to withstand that load let us see if you can uh, look at it a little bit more. For example, this is your substrate let us say and this is another substrate now the adhesive is in between right adhesive. So, this is my substrate this is one of my substrate and the adhesive is in between. So, two things is one it must have good bond here it must have good bond here it must have good bond here bond. So, this is my force of adhesion it must have good bond here the forces of adhesion and if I am transferring some sort of load let us say if I tensile forces are there here then this must be able to withstand then tensile forces. So, it should be sufficiently strong itself and that is what we say the cohesion this cohesion develops through this cohesion develops through uh, cross linking or evaporation as it becomes solids. So, through solidification etcetera right. So, that is what it is ok. Now, continuing with, the, with this so that is the idea of adhesion and cohesion in case of adhesives right. Now, uh, more important one more important issue is you see 10 degree rise in temperature doubles the rate of reaction. So, if you have 20 degree centigrade you increase the temperature to 30 degree centigrade the rate of reaction will become double right. Similarly, increase from 30 to 40 degree centigrade then rate of reaction will become again double. So, if I go from 20 to 40 the rate of reaction will be actually 4 times 2 to the power 4. If I go to 20 to 30, 40, 50 2 to the power 3 8 times and so on and so forth. So, in this process you see 10 degree rise in temperature doubles the rate of reaction. So, rise of temperature from 20 to 100 degree centigrade centigrade therefore, will increase the rate by 256 fold that is 2 to the power 8 because 20 to 30 2 to the power 1 30 to 40 2 to the power 2 from 20 to 40 2 to the power 2 20 to 50 2 to the power 3 20 to 60 2 to the power 4 and so on and you will find it is to the power 8 is 256 fold. So, if you go from 20 to 100 degree centigrade reaction rate increases to 256 fold. Now, supposing a material which cures at 100 degree centigrade in 24 hours. So, at 100 degree centigrade it cures just in 24 hours. Now, in 20 degree centigrade its rate of reaction will be 256 times slower. So, if it was curing at 100 degree centigrade by 24 hours in 20, deg 20 degree centigrade it will actually cure in 256 multiplied by 24 hours which means 256 days so, 256 days means 7 to 8 months. So, that means if you keep the same material just it is cures in you know cures itself. So, if you keep keep it in 24 degrees 20 degree centigrade if if it cures at 100 degree centigrade in 24 hours in 7 to 8 months it will actually cure it will solidify or the reaction will take place. So, therefore, shelf life is related to those those products which you do not have to mix and it cures on its own just apply the glue or the adhesive and it cures on its own let us say right. So, then not more than 7 to 8 months may be its shelf life. So, it is very important you cannot apply it for after a very long time once it is produced their shelf life is, life is important and this is important for many other polymeric material that is used in construction right. So, it can be used within you know specified time within the specified shelf life and not beyond that. Then it is important at times to convert the adherent, adherent by using a primer. Uh, which which could be prime coat as I said in case of painting. So, you put a primer so that you convert it such that adhesive can bond it. This is can be done anodizing or etching by metals for example, you can do etching in some cases to obtain a more suitable state where the adhesive can bond it. 
So that is the idea. Adhesive can bond it, right? More suitable state. All right. Now, uh, followed by this is that this process of conversion that you are doing, it must be compatible with the system. For example, if you use, if you use, uh, let us say, acid in case of metals. Now you know metal corrodes in acidic environment. So compatibility with the adherent is important. For example, acidic material on metal would mean increased corrosion risk. So that is important. So whenever you are using a conver con some sort of conversion, some sort of primer that should be such that it does not, it should be compatible with the substrate and does not create a problem from durability or similar situations. So that is about the adhesives. Let us look at sealants, the other kind of material which is very much used in construction and, and corresponding materials we will see. Sealants are similar to adhesives, they are similar to adhesives except that they fill gap. See adhesive bonds to, to material, to component. Now sealants what do they do? They do similar things, they bond to material all right, but gap between them which has been left for various purposes, you know. So they actually uh, fill in the, fill in the, you know, gap and they not necessarily need to bond the substrate. I mean not a very strong bond is necessary, but they should be actually fill in the gap, you know. So need not bond and not necessarily bond the substrate, right. For example, this can be used for making it leak proof, do not want water to en enter or it should be able to allow expansion, contraction, thermal expansion and contraction and filling the gaps do not allow moisture or something to get in, but allow its expansion and contraction of the, the component between which the sealant has been put. So that is the sealant. In sealants we put, so they will have similar sort of material, right and we put, but that should be, you see this sealant should be resilient because it should be many a places it should allow expansion contraction of the uh, basic material or substrate where it has been applied, right. So there we add fillers for good gap filling properties and it must have good slump resistance, you know resistance against flow should be there, should have low slump. You apply the sealant and if it flows down, if you apply a sealant and if it flows down the gap then it is not a good sealant. So that is why it should have good slump resistance against flow. Desirable properties, flow maximum should be 3 millimeter. Desirable properties, maximum flow should be 3 millimeter. Should have good elastic recovery because as I said, sealants go into the gap between two components and those components themselves might be expanding and contracting. So if they are expanding and contracting, they should, the sealant should be able to take care of these deformations, you know, or periodic deform or you know repetitive deformations and should have good elastic recovery, should not crack themselves, should not show permanent deformation, but deform and come back to the original state. So that is what is elastic recovery or resilience. Adequate tensile modulus it should have, should be able to withstand, should have good cohesion and adhesion properties, cohesion properties means it must be strong itself, adhesion means should have good kind of bond with the substrate and resistance to compression and shrinkage because it should be dimensionally stable, should not be shrinking too much. So then this will create problem, it will actually induce stresses onto the substrate itself. So these are the properties, desirable properties of the sealant, you know should have low flow, otherwise you apply the sealant it will flow through the gap and will not actually close the gap. Elastic recovery should have good elastic recovery because it has to withstand lot of deformations and should have adequal tension modulus. So adequal tension modulus means should not expand itself too much under the same force. Then what will happen? It will actually exert pressure onto the substrate. So should have good adequal tensile modulus of elasticity, should have good strength itself and should be able to bond with the substrate and it should be able to extend compressive forces also because it is likely to undergo both compression and you know tensile stresses, it is likely to encounter both tensile and compressive stresses because it is filling the gap and should have shrinkage, low shrinkage characteristics. This would make clear what the sealants are and what are their failure characteristics. 
for example, this is my substrate one and this is the other and this is the gap where I fill in the sealant, you see this is the sealant. Now, that is what, what we are saying that this sealant should be able to bond here adequately, bond here adequately right and then uh, should because this can expand or this can contract this gap can be smaller then it should be able to withstand that compression and also when it starts expanding back it should recover easily right it should recover easily. Similarly, when this expands it will be subjected to actually tensile stresses. So, it should have good adhesion so that it, it will also expand and withstand able to withstand this tensile stresses itself. Besides that it should have good modulus of elasticity or compatible modulus of elasticity because if it is under the same tensile stresses if it is trying to expand more it might actually induce some stresses there right or if it is not expanding might induce again tensile forces here. So, that kind of thing so it should have a compatible uh, modulus of elasticity and uh, should not flow when you are applying because this is usually applied in liquid state it should not flow down through this rather get filled in putty is one of them you know it is used as sealant all right. Now, uh, because they are oil based rinseed oil uh, with lycopodium powder that makes it putty. So, that is a sealant basically. So, uh, okay. now failure mod modes if you see the adhesion failure you see the adhesion has failed the bond between these two has gone the adhesion failure right. So, this is one type of failure the spalling involves the substrate itself has gone spalling because substrate itself has gone there is a strong adhesion, but it is such that actually it has taken away the sealant is up to here the gap remains still below and then cohesion failure means it is itself has failed you see the cohesion failure means this itself has failed and this is this is also true for adhesives if it is also true for adhesives right then there is folding also there is folding means actually this is this is folded actually you know dimensional instability actually at the surface. So, it has folded and intrusion is some external material quite often occurs in case of road uh, sealant used in roads construction may be an aggregate or something would have come in and pierced into it. So, pierced into the sealant. So, intrusion that has taken place then the sealant once this is removed this has gone away the sealant there is a failure in the sealant. Okay, so, these are some of the mode of the failure of the sealant and this also we understand that similar sort of behave, you know this diagrams also explains what would be adhesives, but adhesive will actually continue through it will be through and through and cohesion and adhesion that is we have seen those failures that takes place. Besides that there could be excess, ex, excessive extrusion the whole thing coming out ex, you know under deformation when this is compressing let us say a lot of material comes out this could be another kind of failure slumping that takes place in the liquid state or if it is in molten state everything flows down. Chemical attack is attack from the outside external environment and removal under pressure supposing there is high water flow through this. So, if it goes away it is just washed away under pressure. So, these are the other kind of modes of failure which is possible for sealant right which is possible for sealant. Okay. If we see some of those sealants all you can see their service life for example, you know putty and similar sort of thing all oleic acid or oil and resin sort of thing their lives are generally of the order of around 10 bituminous silence their lives are around 10 rubber bituminous situations mixes they are about 10 butyl butyl rubber solutions you see one of the common type of uh, uh, silence those are used are butyl rubber solutions when I was talking about product I just mentioned them. So, butyl rubber solutions which are used they are 10 years, acrylic resins uh, sealants 15, flexible epoxies 20. Very commonly used one is polysulphide there are several monocomponent bicomponent system I just put roughly here polysulphide is 20 years of life, polyurethane type is 20 years of life and silicon also 20 years of life. So, these are the kind of sealants which you can have and typical service life ideas are uh, of this kind that means after this time after 20 years you have to replace provided you have done it properly the application has been proper. If the application is not proper you may not actually realize this life. So, this is the life of sealants right. Let us go to another class of material structural elastomers we have defined what are the elastomers and in structures where do they use them you see vibration isolation under machines machine foundations 
because you do not want vibration from the machine to be transferred to the structures. Well, these days uh, base isolation is done also for seismic structures. So, they are also sometime in noise control in building, you do not want noise to transmit from one floor to the other. There are other kind of construction of, also of course, which you will look sometime later on what is called floating constructions, but uh, vibration supposing you do not want it to be transmitted machine vibrations or the noise generated then use isolators and uh, uh, bridges of course, you use bearings that means from the structural element to the pier say beam girder to the pier. So, it is supported on bearings, so that lot of vibration that is not transmitted there is it, it absorbs or uh, you know lot of shocks and vibrations is absorbed. The system those are used are carbon loaded natural rubbers reinforced with steel plate let us say carbon loaded natural rubber together with reinforced with steel plate. Also laminated blocks of synthetic rubber polychlorophene or poly isoprene quite some time with cork particles and the nylon rubber reinforcement this has been used for vibration isolation pads. So, vibration isolation pads should be natural rubber loaded with carbon then reinforced with steel plate and then also other varieties are laminated blocks with synthetic rubber with uh, reinforced with cork particles and nylon rubbers can be uh, used because this is for resilience you know shock absorbing it should be damping characteristics you know it should have sufficient damping characteristics. So, resilience it can absorb this energy and release it later on lot of damping properties can absorb lot of energy and that is why they can actually do not transmit the do not transmit the vibration do not transmit the vibration right do not transmit the vibration ok. So, that is what has been used in bridge PTFE are very commonly used polytetrafluoroethylene Teflon we would have heard of this. So, Teflon are used PTFE whose uh, polymeric name is polytetrafluoroethylene polytetrafluoroethylene uh, that is Teflon this is very commonly used in bridge bearings neoprene bearings have been used. So, these are the use of structural elastomers we defined elastomers earlier some usage I am just mentioning and the material that goes in. Then we would like to introduce you to composite sandwich panel another kind of uh, polymer composites which are used in construction. You see these panels can be used for various purposes roofing walling etcetera etcetera and its basic structure as you can see is sandwiched. So, you have leaves interior, so inner leaf, the outer leaf, inner leaf and the outer leaf. So, it has got leaves actually this is the leaf, this is the leaf and you have a pigmented fire retarded gel coat because as I said many of this polymeric material are susceptible to fire or high temperature they would degrade, decompose or even burn when subjected to uh, fire. So, therefore, you need a pigmented fire retarded gel coat you know you want to have a paint basically the color would also show. So, interior would be something like this then you have uh, you have a skin which is also fire retarded which is which is basically the uh, you know outer leaf of the sandwich panel. Now, supposing I have transverse loading from this direction or this direction it will be bending and you know the bending stresses are maximum at the outer leaf outer fiber takes the maximum stress. So, bending would be actually taken care of by this fire retarded skin and also by this and this core transfers the shear you know transfers basically it is a shear connector. So, this must have good shear resistance because you know in bending maximum shear is at the center. So, this can resist very high bending stresses provided this leaves are capable of withstanding the bending stresses themselves. So, usually there will be fiber reinforced plastic glass fiber reinforced polyester or such rigid uh, fiber reinforced composite you know very strong they are they can take lot of tensile load or can is capable high tensile stresses and high compressive stress also. So, strength tensile strength should be high compressive strength should be high of this ones whichever way it is. So, tensile and compressive strength should be high for this leaves this should have high shear resistance shear resistance because it has to withstand, but it has got other purpose it can act as thermal insulation. So, you can have polyurethane foam core. So, this core is supposed to withstand I mean the shear transfer the load from the outer leaf to the inner leaf or inner leaf to the outer leaf 
right bending stresses from outer leaf to the inner leaf and would stand the shear stress bending shear stresses. So, therefore, these cores are not very strong, but at the same time they serve the purpose of functional purpose of thermal insulation. For example, polyurethane foam will have very low thermal conductivity and also uh, serve the purpose of let us say noise and uh, you know noise uh, insulation and so on. So, surface skins of course, has to be fireproof and if it is outside it must be UV radiation proof because if it is exposed to the sunlight. So, this is what is a sandwich panel construction and polymeric materials have been used not much in India till date, but they can go in making of uh, various kind of roofing system. You know they can go in production of various kind of roofing, roofing system. So, they actually they actually uh, can go into production of various kind of roofing system and also walling system uh, they can go into walling system, roofing system and walling system etcetera right. They can go into roofing and walling system itself and uh, uh, can resist bending load. Functionally efficient system they are lightweight and also we can design them for the specific color texture, we can design them the exter external surface for rejection of solar radiation or acceptance because absorptivity can, can be high or low and uh, therefore, we can make them design them you know tailor them to specific properties. So, they have lot of advantages they are lightweight, but remember they are costly also robustness will not be there in such structures, but you can make uh, large span says you know large span roofing uh, bus stand roofing for bus stands or dome for and similar sort of you know places where you want column free space you can use them column free space you can use them. So, roofing shell structures wall panels also because they are lightweight. So, in very tall buildings where you have framed construction you can use them for wall structures right. So, you can see now into waterproofing treatments you remember we discussed about the surface treatments earlier and coating was one of them. The coating is nothing but something like paints. So, therefore, you can have polyesters epoxies and acrylics etcetera we discussed about the coatings, but then we discussed about two other systems called one we call as pore lining system and we said that there is something called pore blocking system. The material those goes into those that go into I mean those go into the pore blocking system and pore lining system we will discuss them right now. For example, you know alkoxy silence are the monomeric organosilicon compound containing carbon, nitro, hydrogen, oxygen and silicon atoms and they can penetrate deep into porous material and on curing can bond with the substrate. So, this material silence can bond with the substrate very easily they are low viscosity they can go into the pores. And large number of this al alkoxy silence joined together forms what is called siloxanes. M stands for metals, R stands for alkyl group, R stands for alkyl groups and then H 2 S i O 3 and several siloxanes together form silicones. These silicones can form you know they either can be dissolved in a solvent and make pore lining treatment or they can go this actually silence you can penetrate into the concrete and then polymerize right. So, this polymerization can give silicones which are pore lining treatment. The pore blocking treatments are liquid silicates or silico fluoride remember I talked about silico fluoride uh, using used for waterproofing. So, they are used they are pore blockers they react with the lime present in the concrete system and form CHS gel or insoluble calcium silico fluoride. So, they are pore blocker because they form the CHS gel and blocks this pore they are pore blocker. Epoxy or acrylic resin can also be used for pore blocking purposes. So, that is what is the pore blocking and pore lining, lining treatment for waterproofing. Silicones are for pore lining treatment and then fluorides are for blocking or sometimes epoxy and acrylic resins can also act as pore blockers. So, therefore, we have discussed now almost all uses of uh, uh, you know polymers in construction. Uh, we have looked into uh, uh, concrete repair uh, and we have looked into waterproofing system, we have looked into paints, adhesives, sealants and that is the major uses and also looked into composites they are used in polymer you know in construction. So, that finishes our discussion on polymer, 
with this I think we can conclude. Thank you very much.